Hello Internet, my name is Julia Fernandez. I am a product design intern turned product designer at Arcade, and today I'm going to be answering the question, what the heck is a design token? I know you're probably thinking, why of all people should I be listening to a product design intern turned product designer from Arcade, a company I don't really know much about, when you could be listening to more credible people, <clears throat> Dan Mall, Brad Frost, Ian Frost, Josh Clark, Gina Ann, <clears throat> about design tokens. Well, to be completely frank with you, it's because prior Prior to starting an internship that literally had me designing a product that helped edit, manage, and create design tokens, I had to learn what the heck I was dealing with. So I had to do a bunch of research with the help of Mike Carbone, Leslie Camacho, and Dan Mall, the co-founders of Arcade, to figure out what it is. And so treat this video as a TLDR of all that intern research that I did. You're welcome. That being said, there are already a ton of resources and things that I'll be linking below in case you wanted to learn more and actually hear from the people that wrote the articles I learned from. Now let's get down to business and back to basics. Whenever I'm trying to learn something completely new, I always try to start by asking these elementary questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and how? And so that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing for design tokens. So first is who. Now while she didn't invent it, Gina Ann, a design systems advocate and a huge name in design tokens has been a constantly popping up in my design research. She is a design systems advocate that has clarified through the Clarity Conference a lot about what design tokens and design systems are. She is one of the biggest, if not the actual biggest name that has popularized the design token workflow state of mind. Now to answer the question of who. Who exactly needs design tokens? I have two answers for this one. Directly, designers and developers need to use design tokens in order to optimize their workflow, regardless of their team size. So it can be one person who's wearing the, all the hats or a huge organization that has a bunch of people wearing hats. Indirectly, we're talking about company founders that want to make sure that their design systems and products are completely coherent across all platforms, and therefore maintaining a consistent brand and visual identity for their users. Now to answer what is a design token. After a lot of my research, here is the clumsy definition that I came up with. A design token is essentially a visual brand attribute or decision that is translated into a magic number through code. So whether that is CSS, JSON, you name it. A magic number is a random value. For example, a hex code. So if we have white, which is hashtag FFFFFF, and it's renamed in code as brand color white. And now for a visual designer's analogy. In the same way that designers like myself are using the Creative Cloud library to store different colors, images, and so on for various projects, I'm able to use these defined values across different file formats. If I have that brand color white and I wanna use it on a t-shirt versus a, a postcard, I'm going to be using this Creative Cloud library with that hex code that is already inputted in there to make sure that that color t-shirt is going to be the same as that color postcard that I'm going to make in order to ensure brand cohesiveness. Now the creative cloud library that I'm talking about is acting as a single source of truth for those values that represent my brand color. And in case I need to edit and replace the color from white to black, I can just go to that primary brand color name and switch up the value that it represents. And because the idea of the Creative Cloud Library is that if you change a value, any value that's linked to that value, so anything that was white in my initial design will now turn black. And since it's constantly synced, I can ensure that all of these values will stay true. Now for a more universal analogy. To me, design tokens and the place where you put them are like a Rosetta Stone for your designers and your developers. As we know, different code applications call for different code syntaxing. From Gina Ann's feature in the Smashing podcast, she describes how this can be implemented. Colors, for example, like transparent colors, you do differently in Android, like eight digit hex instead of RGBA, like you would do with web. Rather than saying RGBA 50 comma 40 comma whatever the color, you can say color background card or something like that. It's really more of a named entity now. And then you can all be speaking the same language, even though it might render a different syntax. Now we go to the where. More specifically, does a design token have to live in a design system? And the short answer is no. While a design token can be used to help contextualize a design system and make use of the contents inside a design system, design tokens can simply exist in any text editor. Basically, someone can just map design tokens internally within their code. Arcade CTO Mike has some thoughts about design systems and design tokens and where they stand. And I'll be linking that Twitter thread down below. Now here's another question. Are design tokens only found in code? 
The answer is also no. While design tokens are implemented and come to life through different text editors, they can very much be defined by the designer to the developer in some kind of handoff file. In addition, you can also find them in a design token manager like Arcade. More on that later. Now we're on to the when. When should I start using design tokens? Because design tokens are so revolutionary and are now more than ever starting to become implemented in the design process, it is important as a designer or a developer to know a little bit more about it so that you can start implementing that design design token thinking workflow. Just imagine, no more redlining, no more tedious specking, and working smarter, not harder. Imagine having no more questions about if this color is right, or if the line height is correct, or if this line spacing is actually the line spacing that you initially assigned. Imagine having to only define a value once, regardless of how many times it is in your code. If you plan to grow your product and have it scale, use design tokens. Now onto the why. The first thing is something I already touched about, which is maintainability and consistency in branding. Successful branding is consistent branding, regardless of how many products you have. In order for someone to establish a gut feeling with a brand, that brand should be really, really good at consistently showcasing their brand attributes visually to their end users. Successful branding has to be maintained. If you're a huge enterprise company that has a bunch of different products under your belt and suddenly leadership decides that you have to change brand color in order to become a more accessible brand, you bet your bottom dollar people are gonna be confused if suddenly you change your primary brand color from red to blue. It's going to be very jarring to your end user if there are slight inconsistencies with your branding. While this may be an extreme example, can you imagine if Coca-Cola suddenly changed their iconic red to an electric blue? The second reason is communication workflow. Creating a system of design tokens equates to producing a source of truth for your company. This source of truth is a safety pad for any breakdowns in communication, lack of documentation, and other human errors that are already bound to happen. Through developing and documenting your brand attributes and translating them into design tokens, you are able to keep track of various design decisions that are made by your designers. Through developing a system in which all of your brand attributes are translated into design tokens, you are able to, one, keep track of all your designers' decisions, two, you're able to ensure that the implementation goes smoothly with your developers, and three, you're able to have a source of truth in case your system breaks down. Now onto the how, and this is where it gets spicy. Now that we know what design tokens are, I'm going to tell you how you manage them. If you wanna learn a little bit more about design tokens and how they work in code, I'm not that person to answer that question, and I'm going to be leaving links down below to people who know what they're talking about. There are already some companies that have begun to tackle the problem of how to manage design tokens, but at Arcade, that company you don't know much about, we have found where these different products are lacking. Some of these opportunity spaces include one, the ability to utilize and synchronize design tokens to applications that designers actually use, such as Figma, two, the ability to access versioning and history, and three, the intuitive functions needed in a platform agnostic source. This is where Arcade comes in. Through Arcade, administrators, which include project managers, developers, and designers, sometimes all of them being one person, we see you start up. Through these projects, designers are able to input brand attribute values. So again, brand color, brand typeface, paragraph one spacing, you name it. And utilize our Figma plugin specifically made for Arcade, created by an amazing and talented developer named Yan6 that syncs token values online. In the synchronization, developers have access to a localized and live CSS link for quick and easy access to design code. Not only that, but Arcade is platform agnostic. That means you can output all of these things in platform specific code. CSS, JSON, you name it, we've got it. Arcade is a single source of truth for design. It becomes a one-stop shop for your organization's brand attributes and decisions. It comes with zero configuration design token API. So you can easily access your brand attributes in any language and any format. Not only that, but we have permissions and versioning, meaning you can make your brand as accessible, editable as you want by people at your company. Arcade is an end-to-end -end design solution. So say no to multi-documentation and endless Slack chats used for clarification. It's a place where theme alterations are no sweat. Through Arcade's design tokens, you are able to play with different ways of theming without the heavy grunt work. Finally, we have our integrated Figma plugin. It is especially designed to use with Arcade and provides seamless integration with your designer's workflows. 
As the world stands, design tokens are stored in code because they have to be able to support a bunch of different platforms. But what happens when design decisions are made and have to be updated within the code? That is essentially what we're trying to solve through Arcade. To learn more about Arcade, make sure to click the link to our new landing page and learn more about how you can level up your team's workflow. If you have any more resources that you think would be super helpful for someone that is like myself, learning more about design tokens and how you can articulate it in your own words, make sure to link those sources down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.